Hi, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Morning. Morning. <laughs> See Rustam over there. Great. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, I imagine some more people might might trickle in, and so I'm going to just keep letting people in for a while. Um, but as we as we start, um, let's just do people want to just put into the chat. So we're live right now. We are this room is being broadcast into the refest virtual venue. So anybody who's watching um, on on the refest virtual venue. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Um, this is a meetup of all sorts of artists from around the world who have shared their work in this festival. So if you've been watching um, Refest, these are some of the artists who are behind those video works. Um, and I'm Maddie, I'm part of the team at Culture Hub and I'm in New York City. And where are you all, everybody who's who's in the Zoom? Would you put it we're streaming the chat, so everything that we put it in the chat is um, visible to our our audience. So, where are you? Put it in the chat. Brooklyn, Berlin, Istanbul, Portugal, New York, Kazakhstan, Italy, Croatia, Toronto. France, France, Suriname. Exciting. Bulgaria. And um, how's the weather? What's the weather like? Put it in the chat. Sunny, sunny, hot. Billy hasn't been out yet. <laughs> Starting to be nice. It's a little gloomy. Plus 25, that's hard for me with a little Fahrenheit mind. <laughs> Super gray between cloudy and sunny. Is it raining for anybody anywhere? Any storms? Really. No storms in the world right now? Mm, sadly, no. <laughs> it's always raining emotionally. Mm. Cool. Um, and when you look outside of your window, if you have a window where you are, um, can you describe in the chat a couple of things that you see? TV tower, scaffolding. I see a brick wall. Horrible neighbors, a lake, a high rise. People coming back from work on the main street. Does anybody want to show us their their window right now? If you do, you could maybe raise your hand and then I'll pin you. Okay, I'm going to pin Marwa. Let's see your window. Traffic, where are you? I'm uh, actually in Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, 
So that's the view from Ethiopia. Nice. Thank you. I just find out something is burning over there. <laughs> so uh -oh. it's not all, but something oh. burning over there. I have no idea what it is. And uh, where are you? Where are you? Why? So you hear me? You can see the burning stuff. Yeah, I do. Oh, where? I have no idea yeah. what it is. But it's a huge uh -oh. one and very far. Hmm. Uh oh. And where are you? Uh, I'm in the South Italy. Oh. You can see also some some vegetable over here. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Not bad. <laughs> Anybody else want to show well, the view from their window? Hear, right? Hello. Who's that? Oh, hi. Okay. Uh, two bungalows and a red car. Nice. And where are you? In the UK. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's hard, but I can understand. <laughs> Your accent Anybody is else? easy. It's easier than mine. Yeah. Anybody else want to show their window? Ruben, are you showing your window? All right, I'll do it. Who's that? It's Nick. <laughs> yes. Are you here? And we're looking at Nick's window, which is water in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Very high rise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 23 <laughs> floor. Any other windows? <laughs> Rustem. You're muted. I can show. Let's see Rustem's video and then I'll show Ruben's video. Rustem yeah. and Ruben. Yeah, let me try to show you. I don't know if you can see it. Well, nice. Well, we, we see us in the window and we see a sunset no. in Kazakhstan. No. Yeah. Maybe see some mountains mm -hmm. there. I don't know. Wonderful. Okay, Ruben, let's go to your window. Hello, everyone. I'm at, I'm at work, so... Uh... There is no windows at work. <laughs> there is. I just opened the door, but to have a better view. And where are you? Um, me? Yeah. Where? Um, I'm at work. Uh, I give, I give an. Uh, I'm a, a art teacher. In what country are you? Uh, Suriname. That's Very in uh, South America. Very cool. Yes. Last window or two, anybody want to show us their view? Luis? Oh, this is Braga. Braga is very blurry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Where's where's Braga? Braga is in Portugal. Uh -huh. In the north of Portugal. So I'm in a rural limit. Like the city is five minutes from here, but we have some animals around and lots of green. Peaceful, peaceful place. Lovely. 
Louisa, I want to visit. <laughs> Can I stay with you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, just... I, I can show you a great attraction here, which is a mountain that magnetically, magnetically uh, drags the cars. The cars is going down and the mountain pulls it back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and just um, for, for good measure, I'll show my window at Culture Hub. Such a beautiful view. It's so sad. <laughs> but no, if, you, if you look that way, you start to see. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the, the Zoom call is the better view. OK. So here we are. Thanks, everybody. If you joined a little bit late, um, do you want to just tell us where you're joining from, and um, and and what the weather is, and what you see outside of your window? Um, cool. I well, can thanks, say everybody. I joined a bit late. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Where are you yeah, going, I'm, Rebecca? I'm, I'm joining you from Leipzig. I don't know if you'll be able to see anything. You see. Yeah. Weather is quiet. I don't know. It changes every five minutes. So from rain to sunshine, <laughs> as usual in Germany. Very good. All right. Well. Thanks everybody for um, joining us and for being a part of ReFest this year. Um, like I said, I'm Maddie, I'm part of the team at Culture Hub and I've been sort of like looking through all the submissions and um, getting everybody's work together and to our creative technologists that then, and our coders who could then build this platform that we're streaming on um, and, and ReFest is a an annual festival and it often occurs um, largely in person. Um, we've done virtual components of it before and online only things during the pandemic. Um, but this year we um, we we had our theme be resource. And generally we choose one word um, that has a prefix of re. And we think about that word and, and resource and just the word source and what does that mean to us and what questions come up around that word for us. And as a art and technology community, um, a global art and technology community that uh, tries to find ways to connect that community using both online and, and in-person tools, um, we think a lot about the sort of concept and practical realities of open source technologies and systems. Um, and so we were sort of wondering like what would happen if we tried to open source the festival, which I'm not saying that we've done it successfully, but we were started to think about how do we make this as open as possible so that um, the curation really comes from a community um, we're not really making selections. It's more of an open call for global participation. And the outcome is really like an experiment in um, in duration and uh, and part and that participation. So and then the broadcaster that we're using is also an open source technology. It's um, Live Lab Broadcaster is a, a web based software that um, it's a browser based streaming platform that's really low latent um, and it's highly customizable so you can really really do what you want with it. Um, so with all that in mind when we were thinking about resource we were starting to think about what are the resources that are available to us? What are the resources that our culture our societies value? What are the resources we we as individuals and an artistic community actually value? What resources are we rich in? What resources do we need much more of? 
um, is kindness a resource? Is money a resource? What are what is what are the resources available to us, and and how do we how do we share those with our community? Um, so those are imagination. all imagination. Just... Imagination, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we can give other people. Yeah. So just as Jim has started, um, what we were thinking is we could break out right now into a few breakout rooms and give you all a chance to just talk with and meet a smaller group um, and ask, a, and we have two questions for you, which are, um, what resource, what's a resource that you have that you could share with a global community? And what's a resource that you need? Um, and I'm going to put us into breakout groups. And, you know, now you can just um, talk and meet with, with a smaller group and answer these two questions, talk about these two questions, which I'll put in the chat. Um, and I will also... Um, when we come back, uh, we'll have we would like one person from each group to to share from that group. Um, okay, I think we're back together. So, does one person from each group want to share share something that they discussed in in the rooms? Somebody be brave. Somebody's brave. Well, yeah, that, that, that. that was the question brave. everybody was uh, waiting for. Like, mm -hmm. how are you all dealing with AI? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we came at that question, yeah. Mm. And uh, I think we found out that it's like uh, like a tool, like all, like, like all tools. And then it depends what your purpose and what is your vision and what is your goal for uh, collaborate on or or use this kind of uh, technology and this new way of seeing things. Scary, but many, many possibilities at the same time. I don't want to put Gabriel on blast, but uh, you talked about your connection with uh, being in the space that you're recording stuff. Maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, uh, basically we... Uh, we confronted about uh, what can be a resource for us. And for example, uh, for me, uh, the resource is to be able to be near the sea because as a sound designer, I'm working a lot with sea sounds. And uh, until two years ago, I wasn't living in a city with the sea. So my focus maybe right now is more connected to be able to be near nature instead of technologies or stuff but at the same time i'm considering also the the, the possibility to bring maybe gear underwater so i'm also uh, thinking about resources that maybe right now are not connected to sound design maybe are connected more to film and um, video stuff and uh uh, for uh, non films, sorry man, I have a bad uh, memory. I forget your name. But for non films, uh, is um, uh, uh, idea of resource can be to have um, uh, a laboratory that can work with eight millimeter films because it's is shooting in eight millimeters. So having uh, a a place in which you feel safe to be your to have your work developed is a is a resource for him. So we we talked about a, a little bit about our work and then we shared this opinion on resources. Yeah. 
personne qui parle pas. Did anybody talk about resources they need? You can just speak. Yeah, to yeah. What, what, what uh, we I, did... I, want, I, I would like to say something. Mm -hmm. Ah, you should speak before. Uh, I'm very happy to be there, but nobody is speaking really of the artistic foundation of his work. Nobody is speaking about his work, what is mean, what is the um, signification. signification because of all, uh, the, it is bounded to the actuality, to the specificity, to the world. It's, we are in, in, uh, in artistic, uh, I don't know because it is uh, New York or, but uh, we have made a lot of festival in France and in Europe and the, the, the feeling is quite different, you know. We are more sensitive, I think. I, I understand well what uh, Brigitte says, because um, our focus on our work is to say artistically, artistically, um, we, we use video as a medium and body other medium. And then the result is um, artistically a, a sort of uh, theatrical appearance and no technological appearance, but it's for our approach of the work but and, you, and the signification. But you know, uh, we have seen in the videos that uh, wonderful works. There is a work, especially of a man, which is a great, great, great creator, which is which name is Robert Kahn. And I think he has a technical and he has a human one. And I think it's very important to see among the loss of technology, wonderful things, this world. That's all. Yes, because, because he puts his camera in front of people well, and just, we, well, just, just so. And uh, he not he not he not uh, uh, ajouté, uh, adding he not adds uh, technical effects, uh, light effects, uh, variations of picture, uh, variations of uh, of screening, etc. etc. Et we 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 think that we think that. Uh, the purpose of video might be very simple. But it's, it might be technically. We saw there is a, we, we make a festival which is very, you, I don't know if you know, there's instant video in France, but they mix all sorts of video and it's wonderful because you have all sorts, very technical one and very s simple one. And I think video is a, very open. Sure. That's all. <laughs> Very good. Can I add to that, please? Yeah, if I understood you correctly, Brigitte and Wald, right? Brigitte and Wald. Yes. Yeah, I think what is happening in the world today and maybe for the last some decades uh, we are in the situation when human, when per, human mind or human, let's say, how I say art, 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 artistry, I don't know how you call it, like artistic, artistic body of a person is in a constant chase with the technologies. This is what happens because, uh, so we have the situation that technologies evolve and progress fast. Why do they progress fast? Because there are huge companies with thousands of workers and brilliant programmers that constantly make better this, all these instruments, video, graphics, whatever. And uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an artist and I'm alone. 
and I cannot catch up with the technologies that are that are made with these thousands of of brilliant programmers, which means that uh, it's probably not the right way for me to try to chase all these new technologies because I will never do it. I will always be trying to learn new stuff, new software, and all these things. So we need to develop uh, a human mind. Uh, like in the opposite direction and and somewhere we will be then free and we will be we can then be like a partners with the technologies when i'm when i'm independent and free and my conscious is developed and then there is this very developed software and then interestingly you can find these ways of how to interact with these technologies and now how and not how to be like servicing these technologies like for example, this Zoom now. So now we have to we have to uh, we have to um, obey to the format, right? Of this even now this uh, this program. So we have to obey this format. And but but if you try and an artist can't do it because art art is this domain where you can actually uh, develop your mind. And artists can develop develop so they can develop faster than technologies with like their visionary and serendipity how we call it right this all this all these things that that come to us through our feelings through this i don't know through these fantasies and magical uh some kind of organ that we can feel the magic of this world and which is behind this physical and uh, things like software and hardware and when and and when we develop in that direction then we can find a very new and very surprising and very, uh, I would say, freeing ways in connecting with the technologies. Mm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Very interesting point of view. Um. Hi, Rastem. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, your point. Uh, I think as a curator of art and science projects, uh, I deeply connect with what you said, uh, because I think that actually artists are those who are moving technology and science forward. And in the field of where I work, uh, it is very much seen in every day how artists are actually uh, changing the way that uh, less creative and more maybe hard skilled people are thinking, uh, but it's helping them to actually expand their view and to create things that have not yet been created. So I think it is not something to be afraid of, but maybe it is uh, something that uh, uh, you as artists, because I'm not an artist, I'm a curator, <laughs> Uh, can actually help uh, with and uh, through the critique or creative thinking uh, we can make uh, both science and technology uh, I don't know more humane and uh, more creative uh, and I think this is uh, actually a great uh, way to move forward as uh, I don't know as a generation because we cannot basically avoid technology but we can rethink it and make it uh, I don't know, less uh, surveilling, less uh, invading our privacy. And artists are doing this. And after artists are doing this, I think uh, people and companies also start to rethink what they're doing. Um, I had I had some thoughts like following up on that a little bit, not exactly. Maybe it's, I don't know. So it it it's both from um, Christina's way of putting it and also the prompt Maddie gave us about like one wisdom to share, something like that, you know. Uh, and uh, one of the things I've always tried to do is uh, volunteer for uh, curation, for programming. And uh, I realized that you have to build your audience. You have to cultivate like your base a little bit. If you are making something really uh, unconventional, 
then you got to invent platforms that will show that because and it, it's a competition it's everywhere it's uh you know you are trying to compete with uh millions of things for someone's attention for someone's um you know not i wouldn't say recognition but i would say that someone's uh you know acknowledgement that they you 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 made some art piece and it's like it's it's a little bit different it's not exactly following the mainstream or uh, conventional uh, ways of expressing you know so um that's one thing i wanted to encourage everyone about that more and more of these platforms should be curated by artists themselves and uh, that's how we get to present our stuff i i, I don't mean it like just because i'm programming a film festival my films are going to play there but uh i think it it becomes a really good way of building a community and you're always going to find like minded people and like minded artists you just need to go out and search for them and try to build a place where all of you can gather you know so um, yeah i think that's how that's I think that sums up everything I wanted to say. I want to make sure Ellen, um, you can say something because I think you were trying to earlier. Yeah, uh, all I wanted to say was, you know, we 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 went around and the way you know, because I was speaking first because I we framed it or I asked the question, <laughs> what do you need and what do you have to share? So um, I think that's, we got to that and it was really interesting what people were saying they needed and what they had to share. And then the time was up. <laughs> so, you know, by the time we got through everyone, but you know, I, I, it was really interesting because I was thinking, I really need that. And, you know, it was like someone popped up. And I was going, oh, my God, this is too much. So, I, you know, it was really interesting to just frame the question very simply. What can you share and what do you need? I think that really, you know, in terms of uh, pushing forward creative practice, that's always an argument for creative practitioners. I, you know, I have things I can share, but I need this. You know, it's a, sort of like a barter economy almost. So that's what I wanted to say we did. Can okay. you give an example of 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 one of those things that came up? Um, I if someone else in the group can talk, I would rather they say something than me. So anyone else who one person dropped out, the uh the person from Suriname said they had to go, so they they dropped out. They were but who who else was in the group? Can you? Someone else jump in because I don't want to yeah. speak for everyone. <laughs> I, I can jump in. I mean, uh, the topic was going very interesting. We just, I wish we had more time. It almost felt like, you know, um, we were sharing that also like practices. Like, I think uh, at some point we would get to the point where we would share probably like will be the best practices for festivals and so on and on and on. Yeah, that's that's what I can add. But it's interesting to find out what uh, others were also talking because I was a bit like, uh, it's very, very interesting topics. It's just very different subjects, what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask, does anyone have any thoughts about Tribeca Film Festival showing the AI shots? Can you repeat, please? So the the Tribeca Film Festival, this year they have a section dedicated to shorts made by AI. I think using the Sora platform. And, uh, you know, obviously it has started a lot of discussions, um, a new set of, a new wave of, uh, you know, um, opinions op-eds and all that so i wanted to know if anyone had any thoughts on that that they want to want to share i do um i mean 
I work that I work with machine learning, researching it, making stuff. So I, I'm not uh, sort of inherently opposed to it. Um, but the wave of LLM generative stuff, there's an interesting dynamic, I think independent of the tech, which is basically a new kind of stock photo search, essentially, um, and potentially a new kind of rendering, which I think is really exciting. Um, but there's a thing going on right now, it's like, basically, would they accept a film made of whole stock photos, you know, uh, of, of a similar type? under the same context, right? So it, it's it's so essentially a way of sticking, um, was it the Walter Benjamin type cult value onto what are basically, uh, you know, stock photo um, searches. <laughs> um, so that, that's, I think, that where it strays into the, the problematic. I mean, in general, uh, I think it's actually really neat that we can render an image with ground up pieces of photos rather than bouncing light off things like this is a new capability and it's really interesting um but you know where the source material comes from in any given case and then is in terms of, of blessing this with the status of a film festival it's okay well if an artist made i mean there are found footage dot there are found footage pieces right if if each of those components was you know found on internet archive and that same film would, would it still have the same artistic merit and and, and that that's that's where i think it gets curious absolutely not fuck ai get some talent straight up like found footage is not the same thing as artificial intelligence artificial being the the main point so mm. um yeah well, just, there's no intelligence right this is this is human-like memory not human -like it's, it, no there's no no, no but you, you missed the first part artificial mm -hmm. it's artificial mm. get some talent um I think uh, I might maybe make a comment. Um, when it, I think like a film with uh, stock photos could be artistically appreciated uh, pretty well, because then it would be mostly a work of uh, editing. It could it could like construct. It could work. It could be more of a work on uh, creation of a narrative. Uh, so like all these like it's not we don't only create the images but we also make uh, links between them and that's also like one of the most important um uh, components of what we do so also I think like with the I didn't see those AI films of Tribeca Film Festival and like I didn't know that this section existed but uh, also there like the artists they will make up a story they will put them together like there is uh, lots of work in that like um that's also an artistic creation i would say um the just as things get nice and hot and spicy in the that's kind of when it's like uh oh it's time to end um because this has been an hour um but i wanted to ask one more question which is I mean, I think like the the real like a, a main question for us has been like what what is the resource of of this potential sort of you know global community if we are you know as Ellen was in this room with um, Becca and and whoever and Ruben and whoever else was there and you were asking what do you have what do you need um, you know that to me it's like okay wait there's a that even the fact that we're all in a room together, that could be a resource that we have. Um, and so I sort of just wonder, and this is a very final question, but you know, is this sort of a coming together and open call and um, is this a resource that is valuable to folks and and how and why? And maybe it's a, um, maybe it, people could just put, one final thought in the chat, um, and then we'll we'll wrap it. Yeah, I just want to add one thing to that, Maddie, which is, um, you know, this is uh, this type of convening uh, and and I, I don't know, uh, solidarity building is something we've been thinking about um, in the the global arts community. Like, yeah, I'd be it would be very. It, 
would this be something if we were to do this on a more regular basis to have kind of meetups like this, is that something that people would find valuable and useful? And also, as you could see, there was such a diversity of topics and things that are brought up. If people have thoughts or suggestions about um, topically how those groups could be framed, um, uh, that would also be really, really interesting to us uh, to learn about, like, you know, maybe there's a group that's, you know, I mean, AI came up a lot. So maybe there's a, maybe there's sort of like a research or discussion group that's like focused on a particular aspect of that. Um, uh, I think there were also, you know, a variety of other things, but um, uh, if you're, if you're open to putting that into the chat, one, is this useful? how it might be useful and also topically if there are areas of interest you know that maybe came up or didn't come up in this group um we would be very curious and and perhaps would be able to um facilitate more um more interactions like this uh and 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 bring people together that's that's within our interest can i add something uh, uh, I wanted to say that I really loved the format of the screening. I think it's it was like really, you know, shockingly good to watch it like this. And I feel like as an artist, this idea to kind of, you know, uh, have two work side by side, being able to switch audio with video, I think that could be something interesting for this type of meeting where we are able to kind of jam of sorts because like at some point I was I, I really loved so many of the films I, I watched so on a cultural level I feel like there, there's an interesting aspect of discovery of cultural overlap and on the other side there's this sort of technical you know cap capability that I feel like it could be really cool to do this like as a group of artists just kind of trying you know someone else's sound with my images and vice versa Thank you. It's been amazing. Cool. Can I add something? To you? Please. Yeah. So what what I what I was wishing to uh, listen more like from you all is like not 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 more like how do things, but why you do we do things. In, uh, or what kind of vision we have of the direction of the world and everything, like speaking about what moves us to do what we do. This is what I, I really like to know from all of you because you are all like very far from me uh, as place and as and, and vision and, and culture. So I, for me, it was very interesting to see so many different videos like and technique but not not really technique it's like aesthetic and how we um all like deal with objects and and reality and this is what what really um was interesting for me like seeing all of, uh, of all your views of the world because I, I am a bit confused of what, what is going to happen and, and what happened, actually. So <laughs> I'm still confused all the time. So uh, I think the very powerful tool we have is to speak about what our direction as human being. I think that's a great um, sort of final note. Um, we're confused, so I guess we need to keep figuring it out together. Um, but... The uh, ReFest is going on through June 11th. There's live um, segments every day. In about one hour, there's a screening of short works from a group in Egypt called Medrar. So tune in in about an hour for a, a 30 or 40 minute program of works from Egypt. Um, tomorrow, we have a live segment produced by our collaborators in Ukraine. On Saturday, we have collaborators in New York and Spain and France doing a piece called Crystal Strings, Love Songs for a Free Palestine. We have a group from Korea that night. Um, on Sunday, we have a group from Brazil and Germany. And then we have our a group in Los Angeles in the evening. We, on Monday, we have a group from Serbia. 
And to close it on Tuesday, we have a group from Brazil. So there's live stuff happening every day that you can tune into. And then the chat is open on the um on the virtual in the virtual venue. So when you're watching the um when you're at the festival, if you pop open the chat, you can um check out who else is there and maybe you'll run into each other in the chat and um that would be fun to to see you all again in that chat and uh please share about the festival with um with your network so more people can um experience your work and and also be a part of this remix um of mixing sound and video together so i'm gonna end it here and um say thank you all so much um Thanks for everyone. Thank you, Matty. Thank, Thank you, Matty. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you all for Thank making you. festival what Thank it is. You. It wouldn't be anything without you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Matty. Thanks for your contributions. Thanks, Billy. It's so beautiful.